Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very special video for you. A lot of people have asked where I get my display cabinets and where do I get my display pedestals. I already made a video on where I get my display cabinets and you can check that out here. But today, I'm not only going to tell you where I get my display pedestals, but the owner of the company that makes them, Bill, is going to give you a tour of the entire facility uh, where he makes these display pedestals. Now, Bill was kind enough to not only give us a tour, but go over some of the finer details on what to look for in display pedestals. Specifically, he makes museum quality display pedestals. So make sure you stay to the end of the video where I'll make some comparison to nice museum quality display pedestals like the ones you can get from Bill and the other more budget options out there. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And before we get started, just a couple of notes. Uh, I chose to film this during the middle of a work day to get that really living and breathing factory feel. So there's going to be some background sounds that's more noticeable in the first couple of minutes of the video, but then it clears up. So that's just something to be aware of. And without further ado, let's get to the tour. my Jeep, the most valuable thing in the building. The last time you were here and you saw it, this actually what looked a lot different. Um, this is a go-kart. Uh, I have a farm and my wife decided that uh, I should build the grandkids a go-kart for up there. So. Um, this is go-kart V2. Uh, V1 was lower to the ground. And I took V1 and I cut the rear end of it off and I cut the front end of it off and I added independent suspension to the rear, changed the drivetrain, and basically just tried to uh, really make it more fun for the kids in the off-road environment. And this is just me tinkering. Um, it's a lot of fun and it was it was a good way to test some ideas I had for what's going to become the full-size one for grandpa. So my name is Bill Scarum. Uh, my company is WW Displays. We have uh, numerous divisions, one of which is WW Pedestals. Uh, WW Pedestals is pretty directly targeted at producing pedestals for both uh, the retail as well as the uh, residential market. We use um, quality materials to produce museum quality pedestals. We use custom manufactured panels in our production. The panels are produced to the specifications that we need to allow our equipment to give us a top quality product. So uh, the pedestals that, that we produce they, they range in shapes from basic rectangles and squares to round, octangular, uh, hexagons, triangles, pyramids, um, and some crazier variations of that. The concept of the pedestal is, is of course, is a box that is, is going to support product, uh, it, whether it be a piece of art or a piece of merchandise that a retailer is trying to use. Um, we, we actually even make pedestals for people. Um, we have a bridal division that my daughter runs, um, and we actually produce the pedestals where the bride would jump up on that, and look at themselves in the mirror and say yes to the dress. The pedestals are, are produced in-house 100%. We manufacture them using um, CNC equipment. The equipment is um, state-of-the-art. It's uh, it's very accurate. We hold tolerances sometimes to three, often to four decimal places in order to produce the correct fit that the customer is looking for. So we take the raw materials, we run it through the machine, we CNC the components, 
we take those components then and then we move them on into the next phase of the operation. Uh, our facility is, is large, it's almost 60,000 feet um, and it's broken up into what we call rooms. So in room one, we prep all the materials and this is room one. Um, this room, which is vacant right now, intentionally, uh, is where all the fabrication takes place. There are nine um, workstations stationed around the room that allow all the fabricators to actually assemble the pedestals. And, the, and depending on the, the type of pedestal, the finish of the pedestal, um, and, the, and the actual construction of the pedestal, the uh, fabricators will use different methods and processes to achieve the finished product. All of the parts come back here. E each part then gets inspected and cleaned and prepped for assembly so that every part is um, inspected prior to assembly. We don't want to have a pedestal go all the way through production and then have our quality control reject it because there was something in there we didn't like. The various builders will, will take all of these pedestals, uh, these parts, and they'll actually spend the time to dry fit it or test fit it. Um, and if, if that's accurate, depending on the, the style or the construction, they will use adhesives, mechanical fasteners, um, and other methods to join these things. Uh, the beauty of the pedestals that we produce is that the quality of them is on a very high level. Um, again, we designed these things to last forever. We started out building retail stores and we went to great lengths to make sure that all of our product would have a long life. We actually have product that I built in the late 80s that is still in use in retail stores. Um, I've been doing this a really long time, so uh, it's, a, it's kind of a really neat, great feeling when I go into one of these environments and actually see something that I did when I was a young man. But the fabricators will, will take these pedestals, they will completely assemble them, um, and at that point, the preppers will take those pedestals and they'll take them to the next step, to the next level. They will take these things and they will, by hand, they will clean them up, they will sand them, they will de deburr edges if they're laminate, um, they will get them completely ready for the final uh, phase of, of production. If it's a wood pedestal, it's going to get some sort of a finish on it. We don't send them out unfinished. They wind up going into the finish room, which is in the next room, which I'll take you to in a moment. But um, if it's a laminate pedestal, it'll go through all of these production steps in this room, and it'll leave this room and go right to the docks for shipping. The pedestals that go through laminate, they'll get hand filed. Um, they'll get um, secondary edge treatment operations, and they'll be beautiful. The process we use actually allows us to get very close to a true uh, NBL corner, a no black line corner. When you're dealing with laminate, um, you very often will, will see a line of black, no matter what color uh, the laminate is, and that's the phenolic showing through at the joinery in the corner. It's a function of filing it, it's a function of, of finishing it. Um, our process um, uses some proprietary cutters that we developed ourselves in-house, all um, high-end diamond tooling. It remains super sharp, and it allows us to cut such a fine edge on, and joint on what we're doing that uh, when we file them, there's virtually no black line. I won't say there is none, um, but there's virtually no black line. So they basically look seamless. When we're dealing with a, a wood pedestal, they will be seamless. We use the same type of of cutting technology to create the miters that we join the wood pedestals with and when you when we take the wood ones we put these wood ones together and we take it through all the secondary finishing steps before it goes into finishing they are perfectly seamless so our lacquer pedestals it's an, an, it's an industrial acrylic lacquer are monolithic they um, we had somebody actually tell us once that they thought it was truly just one piece of material um, and that's a testament to the quality of what we want to put out there. Um, so the laminate pedestals will finish their life here and go right into shipping. Um, the wood pedestals will leave here and they will go into the finish room. They'll go through a multi-step finishing process. Uh, an important thing to note here is that 
Uh, although we have a, a website with hundreds of pedestal sizes on it, the majority of the pedestals that we produce are custom in size. There is no, there's no problem with presenting you with anything you need. Um, we make everything to order. We don't build these things in advance and have a warehouse full of these things stocked. We actually take the order, uh, we put that order into production, we, the order follows through and it ships. Um, and to give you an idea of how efficient our operation is, a laminate pedestal can flow through the operation in three days and a wood pedestal generally in four days. Unless you get into a unique, specialized custom build that is typical of our production times. Three days for laminate and four days for wood. And I don't believe that you can find that actually anywhere else in the industry. And that's whether you're looking for one pedestal or 30 pedestals. Um, that's just the way we're set up, we're designed, we're equipped, and the way we function. So from there, we go into the finish room. Uh, we are a, a zero BOC environment. We do not use any solvent-based finishes, adhesives, anything like that. Um, so what happens is uh, we produce a product that is environmentally friendly and the beauty of that is is not only is it good for uh, the environment it's great for my people my people aren't dealing with all of these bad things um, that you can see in a lot of situations so all of our coatings are basically what you would call water barn um, they are not uh, the coatings or the things that you find at Home Depot Lowe's or Menards um, these are truly designed and engineered for these types of products um, and as you can see, a lot of facilities, you find some really fancy state-of-the-art um, finishing equipment, automation, things like that. But at the end of the day, nothing beats good old-fashioned skill and knowledge. Our people are specialists in achieving beauty. So these finishes are all hand-applied. Um, they're sprayed. Um, but it's all done by hand. No automated lines, no automated systems. Um, it's an individual who is watching everything that's going on and making sure it's right and rejecting anything that's wrong. Whether it means reworking it to achieve perfection or whether it means scrapping it and starting all over. We will do that. Um, we want to make sure that everything that leaves here leaves here as close to perfect as we can make it. So. Everything takes place uh, from a finishing standpoint in this room um, and it produces absolute beauty. That's, that's our, our goal, that's what we strive for. Um, whether it's um, a, a clear finish on a, a beautiful piece of maple, whether it's an opaque finish on, uh, that's say yes to the dress, um, bridal risers, um, or something in between. We see people that uh, send us um, pieces for finishing and refinishing. Um, it's not uncommon for people to want something that is less than wonderful to be made to look wonderful and we can do that for them. Um, and that all takes place in this room. This is, this is a big part of the magic. Um, and it's where truly the, the product shines. That was a little reflective pun. Um, from there, we move on into our uh, shipping and receiving area. Um, because we have so many unique products, um, we actually um, wind up having to uh, take special care and attention to actually getting it shipped uh, so that it arrives intact. But we have developed packaging methods to assure that the product that we ship, and we ship all our product, either FedEx Express, um, or we ship it common carrier. If you have a large volume or pieces larger than FedEx can handle, we ship common carrier. Otherwise, everything goes FedEx. We also package our product rather uniquely. We package our product with such a, um, a uh, I'm not gonna call it an overkill, but a strong supportive packaging that it pretty much guarantees that the product arrives intact. Our actual, um, damage rate is usually less than half a percent annually. Um, and that's a really, really low number in the, in the uh, 
the whole shipping world. Um, and that comes from the packaging that we you know, support the product with. So beyond that, around the corner in the, in the shipping, um, we actually have a little farther down, we actually have a full um, metal working facility. We do a lot of metal fixtures. We do um, all kinds of racking, all kinds of storage things. But one of the things that actually also comes in very handy is we wind up doing a lot of special attachment configurations for artwork on these pedestals for um, you know different groups. When the Art Institute comes to us and they have something specific that they need anchored a certain way, we can fabricate all of these necessary brackets and components. You know, when when uh, somebody has a unique geode and they need it to mount a certain way. Uh, universities come to us with all kinds of, of, of crazy gifts from benefactors that need to be located in these pedestals covered with a vitrine um, and then um, they need to be able to actually move them around in that condition. Well that means anchoring so we, we spend a lot of time actually developing and configuring anchoring systems for the pedestals for the various artworks or artifacts or even just novelties. Um, and uh, we're pretty good at this kind of thing because we've had a lot of experience doing it. Let's, uh, let's go to the dock then. <laughs> we basically package everything here, whether it's being palletized to go by truck shipment or putting cartons to go by a FedEx. Um, all the packaging takes place here. Our packaging is a little bit unique in that we don't use bubble, we don't use newspaper, we don't use crinkle paper. All those things are wonderful when you have little lightweight product. But when you're shipping a large, often difficult to handle package, picture a large pedestal in a cardboard box, um, that type of packaging doesn't work. We experimented for several years with all kinds of different packaging, foam in place, all these kinds of things. And at the end of the day, um, what we found out um, is that the best packaging for these pedestals specifically is what we call coffin pack. Um, and basically, we package every pedestal in the equivalent of a cooler. Depending on the size of that pedestal, it's going to pack, be packaged with either two inches of rigid foam all around it or one inch of rigid foam all around it, depending on the size and configuration of the pedestal. Um, we've actually had these packages tested uh, by a testing lab to assure that uh, the packaging is adequate for the product that we're putting in it, the pedestals. We, we consider pedestals boxes. We're putting boxes in a box, but ironically, the bigger the box gets, the harder it is to handle. Um, so even though this packaging is very expensive, it is actually the only way we found to guarantee that the pedestals actually arrive intact and beautiful the way we've slipped them into the box. So uh, that's the packaging life. Um, at the beginning of this, I, I stated that we are WW Displays, um, and specifically I've been talking about mostly WW pedestals. But real quickly, I should state that uh, WW Displays started out almost 40 years ago, um, and I was manufacturing retail display fixtures. I actually started this business to uh, facilitate the um, opening of new locations to a major national retail chain. Um, and we worked with that company for years and years and years and years, just producing their fixturing, their products. Everything that went into their stores, except for plate glass, came out of our buildings. Uh, and we did this for uh, almost 30 years exclusively for them. We've since then, um, and they are, by the way, still a great customer, and we love them dearly, um, but we have since then diversified. We've, we've moved on to all kinds of different things. We have a division that actually builds acoustical speaker cabinets um, for the high-end uh, home theater market. We also build speaker cabinets that are used to retrofit um, church organs worldwide. Um, these things are designed by acoustical engineers and then we have adapted the, um, the design to our equipment and our construction methods to produce a superior product. Um, so we're working with U.S. companies um, to produce these um, speaker cabinets. Um, 
For some of these companies, we actually even install the components, the internal pieces in them. For others, we just supply the cabinets and they handle all that. We also work with, uh, um, as I said earlier, we have a bridal division um, and we build bridal boutiques all around the country. Um, they, they supply us with um, base drawings and then we develop the entire fixture plan and produce it for, for that particular boutique. Um, and we do been doing this now for about six years um, and that has been growing also. Um, and the interesting part is, is that it's really almost all based on pedestals. We are really the king of boxes. Nobody builds boxes better than us. Th this is just a small uh, representative sample of some of the pedestals that we do. Um, we deal with uh, natural veneers, as in the maple, the cherry right here, walnut, oak, um, both red and white, mahogany. Um, we do all kinds of special requests. We don't necessarily show them all on our website, um, but we do them all the time. Uh, additionally, this is kind of an indication of some of the, of the, of the shape options. Um, you know, we have rectangles, we have cylinders, we have octagons, we have polygons. Um, we have a rectangle with scallops. This one is actually very popular with uh, multicolors. They're, the body might be either um, maple, as you see it there, with walnut or cherry scallops on it, or, uh, or the reverse occasionally, uh, which is very stark and very um, surprising, is like a dark walnut pedestal with maple inserts. So you have a dark pedestal with the white flashes of the, of the maple. Um, we do a lot of lighted pedestals. Um, we use LED lighting. Um, it's all controlled with uh, you know remotes. That you can change the intensity of the light. Some of you can even change the the, the color of the light, um, so that you can you know depending on what you're putting on it, you could be showing either um, a very warm or a very cool um, light source. Um, we also do. Um, a lot of cabinetry and case goods, which is variations on it, and you know traditional boxes with doors and things like that. Um, a lot of that winds up um, trade shows uh, or in large retail organizations and things like that. Um, but occasionally we we get hit with requests for storage type or display type products in unique situations. Um, this round one right here was actually designed to show some expensive uh, high end jewelry in an environment um, where they didn't want people to be able to touch it but they wanted them to be able to see it. Um, so we came up with a unique method of, of protecting the jewelry. Um, basically you'd have to walk away from the whole case to get, to get away with it. Um, so um, you know we, we, we enjoy a problem, we enjoy solving the problem. We created some uh, waterfalls which are uh, basically a group of pedestals in, um, in descending size order that allow you to create a cascade effect with art or product or whatever. Um, and uh, th these just look you know, so unique with their, um, with their grain structure. Um, and then we have the faux marble here, which is, this is actually just a laminate pedestal. Uh, you'd have to get pretty close to realize it wasn't a real um, marble, but it's just a, a laminate um, designed to give you that effect. Um, we have cherry um, just in its in simplicity that's just natural cherry that particular piece of cherry is um, is fully sun aged it, it it's been exposed to enough uv light that it's it's actually darkened into that beautiful patina and it's just um, it makes for a gorgeous pedestal and this is just you know uh, just a small sampling of what we do so now as you can see, not only a lot of thought goes into the craftsmanship of building a great museum quality display pedestal, but also into the packaging and getting it to you in one piece. So now we're gonna go over just a couple examples of more budget options. And as you can see with this black display pedestal here that I really, I had to build this myself. And the first thing you'll notice is all of the seams that you see on this display pedestal. And if you compare it to the ones that you get from WW Display, which are seamless, it sort of stands out here. So uh, I plan to really switch this out <laughs> eventually. So I'll be getting more display pedestals 
that are more museum quality and transition away from this. And also on this white display pedestals, this is a more higher quality than the black one that we just went over. But as you can see, that you can see the seams along the corners and throughout the pedestal. So it doesn't just look like one seamless piece. So that's sort of once you sort of know the difference, it sort of stands out. And uh, again, I'll be looking to uh, switch this out eventually. Well, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed today's tour. I know that I did. I have no ties to WW Display. They don't sponsor me or anything. I'm just a satisfied customer who enjoyed their products. And the initial spontaneous tour uh, Bill gave me when I picked up one of my display pedestals, I immediately thought, I know my viewers will enjoy this. So I really hope you did. And I'd like to thank Bill for all of his time uh, during the tour and WW Display for facilitating it. I plan to do more of these in the future, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and make sure you hit that bell notification so you can be alerted to any future videos I may drop. And until the next video, peace.